I love it when a plan comes together. Wait, that's the A-Team. I was gonna try to like Kramer on, but I just didn't have the energy, so yeah. So who do you go to when you just need a Linux machine and you want it to get out of the way? What's the Thelio, yo? No, I don't, that's, that's a terrible lyric. <laughs> System 76. System 76 makes a lot of systems, laptops included. This is Thelio. These are the higher end systems. And this system is uh, a really exciting project that I am very glad to share. Greetings from Thelio. Thanks for joining us on our mission into the world of open hardware. If you're new to Linux, there are a ton of open source software applications you can download for free in the Pop Shop or Ubuntu Software Center. Our support team is ready to help out if you have any questions. That's on the right. Yeah. Lifetime support. Nice. <laughs> Listen, there are so many little clever things. This is my first time with the System 76 system, and I wasn't sure what to expect. And the case design is unusual. They haven't repackaged or, or rebadged anything from China as far as I can tell. It seems like this is designed to be basically laser cut and then bent on a bending brake. And so there's some rivets, but mostly this case is held together with Phillips screws. And in the description it actually says that these are assembled in Colorado by artisans and they plant a tree. And while that's cool, I mean, you got to look at it, but there's so many little clever things. First, the power button. The power button in the front here, it automatically uh, disconnects. So when you lift the top off, there's like a little quick release thing and it just sort of plugs and unplugs itself. There's a, there's a name for that, an industrial name for that, but I forget what it was. This is actually a standard industrial power button, but they've 3D printed a housing mount thing for it so that it'll hold the button and the connector that automatically slides into the receptacle here. So you lift it off and there you go. The eight, two and a half inch bays that are on the top here, which are designed for SATA discs, unless you go with Thelio Massive, where it's designed for SAS, serial attached SCSI. Uh, these are uh, also open source. So there's a, a printed circuit board here that is pre-wired, pre-installed to the motherboard. Now the motherboard in this case, in this system, is the Gigabyte Designator X399, a motherboard that I've reviewed separately, but was delighted to see set up in this system because it's one of my favorite X399 motherboards and it's a first gen motherboard, but yeah, it's a really nice motherboard. So pretty awesome so far. Then we've also got the way that the airflow works. So there's three intake fans, one on the bottom, two on the side. There are integrated dust filters, but it'll draw air in from the bottom because of the raised lip here. And so it draws all the air in from here and exhausts it out the back. And the rear exhaust thing is a little uh, planetary thing. It's got like the little planets in it. So like our solar system. Solar system maybe would be a better way to describe that. I'm not really sure. One thing I'm not really a fan of at the back is because it is laser cut. Uh, the cutout for the motherboard is not a normal ATX cutout that you could you know, swap the connections for. It's set up explicitly for the Gigabyte Designator. And I think the PS2 port or maybe the BIOS programming button, something is covered uh, on the top edge. So like if you side by side it with the regular Gigabyte Designator, you can see something is, is covered um, there on the on the motherboard, which is not really too much of a problem for for ATX, but the aesthetic I mean if they did it for aesthetic reasons Okay, not too bad. It's got plenty of room for running cables behind the motherboard tray plenty of room for upgradability and all of the other features Got the retention bracket for the extra 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 long power supply now in the box there were not any kind of extra cables for peripherals or anything like that, but you don't need it because the two and a half inch bays, etc., are all pre-powered and the power cables for the PCI Express peripherals come pre-installed. So all of this is good to go for, you know, extra VGA cards or extra add-in cards that you might add that will require PCI Express power. There are some SSDs out there, some enterprise SSDs that do actually require external power because 75 watts is just not enough through the PCI Express bus. The screws like stored with the case, like the case has the screws for the two and a half inch drives, it's built right in. Again, another little interesting, clever feature. The Wi-Fi cutout that I mentioned before, so it wouldn't have too much interference, 
It's pretty awesome. The airflow with everything exhausting sort of out the back over the processor, pretty clever. It's gonna keep things pretty cool. The installed graphics cards are the blower style. So these are, these are RTX 2080s. I think, I don't know, in its final form, that may be another thing that gets upgraded, I'm not sure. But the RTX 2080s are the, are the blower style, which actually works well when you have two cards. So yeah, it turns out the other style of card, cooling is actually a little harder when you've got two in a machine. So this has been kind of a voyage of discovery for me. In terms of like the expansion slot functionality, that's also kind of unique. It's got this thing that slides. And that's what your retention bracket is for your expansion cards. Now the, the blanks are actually screwed into this. So if you want to take it out completely, you've got to undo these thumb screws and then this bracket comes off and you've got the uh, expansion slot covers that are actually screwed into this, which is an interesting mechanism but I ain't gonna complain, that's pretty awesome. And the last thing are the feet. Now these rubber feet are screwed in. They're not glued in and they're very tall. So they are vibration dampening. So as I scoot this thing around on my desk, it really does not wanna be scooted. And uh, you're gonna have to clean my desk a little bit later. The only thing that I've really noticed is the case doesn't have provisions for any kind of front USB, USB 3 or USB C. Um, I guess that's okay, but I would have liked to have seen some kind of a front USB connection, but it doesn't seem like that's there's an option for that, so. Delio, first power on. What's the experience? I don't know. Ooh, it glows softly when it's got power, and then you hit the button, and it gets a little brighter. That's, that's neat. Neat. So when you first set up your System76 machine, Pop OS, that's their custom OS. And I'm gonna have a separate review of that because I think that's worth talking about for a lot of reasons. Most of which are good, just about all of which are good. One thing that I'm noticing about the system is that it's not excessively loud. I mean, you know it's on, you can hear the fan, but it doesn't sound like a leaf blower, which is nice. Out of the box, there's a firmware bug with the CPU frequency scaling governor. That means it's time to update the UEFI. Yes. The thing that I always love to do with a new fresh system is install CPU Freak because I am a CPU Freak myself. <laughs> now one tweak that System76 has made is to tune the memory to 2933. Now that's 64 gigs of memory in this system which means that we've got, well in this particular case it's four 16 gig sticks. So that's dual rank. So that's no small achievement because technically that's not supported. Technically that's an overclock, but in my experience it's pretty stable. And in most people's experience on the level one forums, it's pretty stable. 2933 with this 32 core monster, that's a pretty big performance boost. Now out of the box, your system 76 system doesn't have steam. Oh, we're gonna have to go to the command line and install the PPAs and blah, 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 because it's, no. Check it out. You just run the pop shop. Ah, uh, cause pop OS get, I, never mind. Pop shop, steam, install, password. Done. That's it. It's gonna do everything else you need, pretty much. And again, I wanna say thanks to System76 for going along with my crazy mad idea of Let's see what life is like for Eric Raymond on the other side with an AMD system, gobs of memory, and just crazy performance. So big thanks, System76. Well, good news, I've managed to raise the temperature by five degrees centigrade in the room, <laughs> not inside the case. I guess that's a testament to how well designed that Arctic airflow is in this case. Now, the system does get a little loud when it's uh, under full load. I mean, it's not unexpected, 32 cores. I think the ducted solution of having uh, the airflow of, of the heatsink basically exhaust directly through the rear of the case is a good one. Also, the blower style um, fans on the CPUs really help when you're also running wor uh, workloads like the TensorFlow workloads. So I think I'm gonna do a couple of more videos with this system. One on machine learning with the dual 2080s. 
and one on VFIO, which I'm long overdue. I'm actually probably just going to reshoot a couple parts of it to use this system, because it's like, why would you order a Linux system with dual 2080s? I mean, it doesn't have the, the bridge. Well, one, machine learning, although technically it's against the NVIDIA license to use those graphics cards for neural nets. Blockchain's fine, though. All right, so what's the final verdict on System76? This is honestly an, a, an impressive machine. I mean, the case, it's laser cut. I mean, it's amazing what you can do with a laser cut and a bending brake thing, but, you know, domestically assembled, I think, in Colorado. And the Gigabyte Designator is one of my favorite X399 motherboards. It's a great motherboard. 32-core CPU is handled like a champ. 64 gigs of memory, and this particular system is the Kingston HyperX. Uh, you know, four 16-gig kits, 64 gigs, 2933 stability on the Threadripper 2990WX. That's impressive. Got the Samsung Evo uh, 970. That's a two terabyte NVMe. I think Eric's going to be real happy with that. Then we've also got eight two and a half inch bays for hot swap up here in the corner. We've got our awesome, you know, arcade <laughs> pinball machine for like flipper button style push button, which is, which is pretty cool. We've got our dual 2080s in here, which is good for gaming or machine learning. The rest of the setup, I mean, it's upgradable. It's a normal ATX. Add in other expansion cards, not a problem. It is uh, impressive what they've done with the airflow and the rest of the case aesthetics. I think the case could be a little quieter, but it's not annoyingly loud. So it also breathes really well because it draws air in from the bottom. Now, I don't think that I would use this case on carpet. The 1600 watt power supply is massive overkill. But again, if you're gonna build something like a machine learning rig, well, hell, let's just put four 2080s in there and just go to town for machine learning experiments. This is an absolutely monstrous system and there's tons of little quality of life things here. There's even Sys76 in Morse code on the side. It's a secret message. It's all the little details. System76 has done a really good job. Pop OS is so good, it's gonna get its own video. So the last thing is, I bet you're wondering, what is this computer for? Well, PinguaCon's coming up. This is Eric Raymond's new computer. Yes, that's right, System76 is giving a computer to Eric Raymond. And uh, I'm putting it through the paces. I'm testing it with the 2080s. I don't know that the 2080s are gonna be the final graphics cards that Eric Raymond end up, ends up with. I'm also gonna upgrade this thing from 64 to 128 gigabytes of RAM because His Holiness requires it. So I shall make it so. It's going to be it's going to be an interesting PinguaCon. Here's looking forward to uh, delivering your system, Eric. It should be exciting. I wonder what he's gonna think about Pop OS. This is gonna be an interesting PinguaCon. Be sure to check out that video when we go to PinguaCon. I'm Wendell. I'm signing out. This is level one and uh, come hang out in the forums with their HyperX memory kit. Oh, it just died. Oh no, it's the screensaver. Heart attack, that's maybe one for the bloopers. It's like, <laughs> talking about the stability. Oh no, it crashed. No, it was the screensaver.